As a designer and TV host for the last 18 years, I've helped people achieve the home of their dreams. With so many of us rethinking how we live right now, I wanted to help bring real life solutions to people who are ready to transform their homes with simple, easy to achieve solutions. This is In The Room with John Gidding. Today we're designing for Steven in Tampa. Steven and his husband live in a townhouse and they tried to design a calm, serene sanctuary for the main bedroom. My name is Steven. The ask that we have for the primary bedroom is to warm up the space and to maybe soften the edges a little bit. It's a little bit cold. We like simple lines. We like just like a calm sanctuary is really what we're going for and hope that you guys can assist us on that. Thanks. So there's four problems that we want to address with this room. One, there's no color. Two, there's no furniture. It's a massive room and everything is white on white on beige. Three, there's wall-to-wall -wall carpeting and it's a putty color. It's not doing too much for the room other than providing a soft surface and dampening sound, but those are the basics. And four, we've got air conditioning ductwork soffits and they're only half trimmed out. The top portion of the soffits have a crown molding profile, which I love, but the bottoms don't. And that's where we're gonna start. By beefing up the crown molding profile that leads up to the soffit volume, we open up a whole chapter of trim work that will bring exciting details into a bedroom like this. The first thing that jumps out at me is that even though this is a king size bed with two generously sized nightstands, they're dwarfed in this room. The rest of the room yawns in front of them, one big chasm. But that still gives us something at the foot of the bed and something underneath the TV by this wall that still allows all the circulation that we need. That tells me we need to bring in more furniture into this room and make it work with the circulation of all of these doors and windows. What we can do is bring in a chair that can be easily moved. This provides a bit of versatility for this massive corner of the room, which is stymied by the fact that there's all these doors leading off of it. If we were to find, for example, a working desk, that gives us plenty of space to push that desk up against the wall. Here's my proposed plan, a bench at the foot of the bed. I don't think this needs to be a storage bench. Why? Because this bench needs to scream luxury and sanctuary. It should not scream, I don't have enough storage in this house. The big difference here is really noticeable if you zoom in on the trim details around the window. Whereas before there was no side trim and a very small sill, now we're bringing in much beefier trim profiles to wrap the windows and then for the two large windows, one large sill to combine the two. The other big difference in this room is this massive rug taking up almost the entire floor surface. It might seem counterintuitive to fill up the entire room with an area rug in a room that already has wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, but you have to remember that this rug sets the tone for this sanctuary space. So the importance level of the rug is so high that it's worth spending some money on what will be a very valuable investment. I like this table because it's asymmetric, very masculine, and yet those brass leg details tie in the rest of the metallics that we've got coming into this room. What I love about this bench is the color and the finish of the metal. Again, brass and the color of the fabric, it's almost like a pale grayed out lavender velvet. I'm hoping that the blue tones feel familiar enough to Steven that he won't be irked by a little bit of color at the foot of the bed. I also have to pop in the rug because I'm so tired of looking at this wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. Such a relief as soon as that rug goes in. Why? Because it's providing texture, not a kind of mottled field. The texture is linear and it's a silver color. Not white, not gray, but silver, iridescent. Let's talk about the trim. Look at these two windows and how forlorn they look without any kind of trim on the walls in between them or surrounding them compared to the doors, which look so at home because they've been properly trimmed out. So let's add some trim around these windows. What I love about adding this much trim is it gives us the opportunity to add a second level of crown underneath the soffit. We're gonna look for larger crown profiles because the space we wanna cover is from the top of the windows to the bottom of the soffit. So we're going for some of the larger crown profiles and that goes all the way around the room and ties in the trim that we're gonna wrap around the two large windows. Because they're so close to the soffit, 
they'll tie in with the crown molding profile underneath the soffit, unlike the little unique window off to the side, which has its own story completely. For that little window, we're gonna case the whole thing in trim, but a unique trim. I think this trim around the unique window should be completely flat. The real focus of the unique small window should be the plantation shutters that you're gonna have custom built for this small window. And the idea here is that plantation shutters come with operable louvers with a vertical handle that allows you to set it at exactly the right amount of light to stream in in the early morning. So by finishing out the windows completely differently, it gives them a different kind of identity one from the other. The window dressings and the trim for the large windows should all work together almost like icing on a cake. Of course we need a cake to ice and what that's gonna be is grass cloth. Look at that. The contrast that you had so studiously tried to avoid Stephen has to be brought into this room and I think the right way to do it is the wall surface being highly contrasting with the bright white trim. And we've got the final design. Adding furniture gives this room a sense of place. It needs more furniture and it has the space for it. The television is installed high, so putting a piece of furniture underneath it makes it feel appropriately installed. Two different window finishes. The large windows get Roman shades. The small one gets plantation shutters. That gives them each their own identity. And finally, art. You've got lots of wall space and that one little Blaine Macaulay is not cutting it, although I love the piece. I would say that these corner spaces are really great for art that have matching frames and then the spaces behind the nightstands is great for large scale pieces. If you've got a home makeover project you need help with or a room you'd like to reimagine, drop us a DM at shelter on Instagram and tell us your story. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube so you don't miss a new episode.